Okay, it has been a while since some of you have watched any videos. Um, took a little while to get through chapter five, but we are ready to start chapter six now. So back we go into watching and taking good notes. Uh, chapter six, we're gonna be talking about similar polygons throughout this whole chapter. I had mentioned similar polygons earlier in the year and told you we'd eventually get to them. So here we are, we're now getting to them. So got two videos for lesson 6.1. The first one's just gonna be some terms and some main ideas you need to understand. And then the second video will just be a bunch of examples. Okay, remember, take good notes. You're gonna have a quiz over lesson 6.1, a video quiz, nice little short quiz that you can use your notes on. But if you don't take good notes, you might struggle with that. So get out a sheet of paper, take some good notes, and let's get ready to go. So first, this little symbol right here, okay? It kind of looks like the same symbol we used earlier in the year when we were doing if P then Q, and that was the symbol we used for not, okay? It is pretty much the same symbol. It also looks like the symbol that's on top of the congruent sign, that kind of little squiggle thing, all right? Same idea. That symbol, though, right now means similar. So it's pretty easy to tell when it means not and when it means similar because of the context you will see it in. If you see it in a context like this, Okay, pretty easy to tell that it's a not. If not P, then Q. But if you see it like this, triangle ABC, and then that symbol, triangle DEF, that doesn't mean triangle ABC is not triangle DEF. That doesn't make any sense. So triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. So same symbol, but different meanings. This means not, this means similar. Okay, and it's easy to tell in context which one would makes more sense to, to use. Okay. Order is still important. Remember when we named congruent shapes and the order was important? It's going to be important when we name similar shapes. So A has to match with D. B has to match with E. C has to match up with F. Side AB has to match with side DE. Side BC has to match with side EF. And side AC has to match with side DF, okay? So that order there is still important as well, all right? Okay, now, the next thing is really, really, really important. This is basically our definition for similar shapes. There's two parts to it, okay? So we're gonna talk about sides, and we're gonna talk about angles, okay? So the sides, the corresponding sides. Remember, corresponding means in the same position. And then we have the angles, the corresponding angles. And I left this blank here, that's what we're gonna fill in. So what needs to be true about the sides? The corresponding sides are proportional. Proportional. Okay, make sure you can spell that correctly as well. And then I'll explain what it means here in a little bit. Okay, but they are proportional. As far as the angles go, the corresponding angles are congruent. All right, you should already know what that means. They have the same measure. Okay, so let's talk about proportional sides. Proportional sides means that you can set up a fraction, set it equal to another fraction, and a lot of times we will cross multiply to solve those. Okay, proportional means that if I double one of the sides, so I go from my small triangle to my big triangle, they're similar, they don't have to be the exact same size, but I go from the small one to the big one and I double one of the sides, then I have to double every time I move from one side to another. I can't do something different. That's the idea of proportional, right? Or maybe I go from a bigger triangle to a smaller triangle and I cut every side in half. Okay, then I have to do that to every side. I can't cut one side in half and go from 10 to five. And then the next side, I start with 12 and I say, well, I don't wanna cut this one in half. I wanna divide it by three instead. And I go from 12 to four. That's not proportional, okay? So sides have to be proportional. Angles have to be congruent. That concept right there, those two things are extremely important as we move forward in this lesson and in the rest of the chapter, okay? All right, next thing, scale factor. Scale factor is just a fraction, okay? You take, this is important, you always put old on the bottom of the fraction, you put new on the top, new over old, okay? If they don't give you a new over old, then you'd put first over second, okay? So it could be first 
over second. Okay, if they list one of them first, and they list another one second, then we would do first over second. So like right here, if they said find the scale factor from ABC to DEF, then ABC is the first one, so it would go on top, and DEF would go on bottom. Okay? But sometimes they'll tell you which one's the new one and which one's the old one. We always want to put new over old if that's the case, okay? especially if we're doing something like a, uh, a transformation. Remember we talked about transformations earlier in the year with translations and reflections. Those are always congruent. We have other transformations where we make them bigger and smaller. So in that case, you always want to put your newest one over your old one, your original. Okay? And then when you get this fraction, you want to reduce it. So if you get like 9 over 6, make sure you go ahead and reduce it to 3 over 2. Okay. Now, a couple things. Scale factor. If the scale factor is bigger than 1, then that means that your shape should be getting bigger. If your scale factor is smaller than 1, then your shape should be getting smaller. Okay. It makes sense. Bigger than 1 means shape got bigger. It's what we call an enlargement. And if our scale factor is less than 1, then our shape is getting smaller. It's what we call a reduction. Okay? So scale factor bigger than 1, shape should be getting bigger, enlargement. Scale factor smaller than 1, shape should be getting smaller, reduction. All right? Okay. Perimeters of similar polygons. This is theorem 6.1. It's the only theorem we have in this lesson. It's a really easy theorem to use. Okay? It kind of gets a little wordy, but it's a really, really easy theorem to use. Basically, I'm going to read it out of the book, and then I'll explain it. It says, if two polygons are similar, then the ratio of their perimeters is equal to the ratios of their corresponding side lengths. All this is saying is that, remember up here, sides are proportional, angles are congruent. Okay? the perimeters have this same proportional idea. It's all it's talking about. So if you have similar shapes, similar polygons, the perimeters have that same proportional concept as the sides do. And that makes sense because the perimeter is just all the sides added together. So since all the sides have the same proportion, and when I add them up, they're going to have the same proportion at the very end for the perimeter as well. So all this is saying is perimeters have the same proportional idea, the same proportional ratio as the sides. Okay, same proportion as the sides. Now that proportion is called the scale factor. Okay, so this is all linked together. The proportional sides, the scale factor, the perimeters, they all are linked together. Okay, all right, last thing, a statement of proportionality. A statement of proportionality. Now, let me, let me just explain something. If you write a fraction, 3 over 4, okay, we often refer to that as a ratio. A proportionality statement takes two ratios and sets them equal to each other. It's true that 3 over 4 equals 6 over 8. I could reduce 6 over 8 to give me 3 over 4. Or I could cross multiply. 3 times 8 is 24. 6 times 4 is 24, it's the same, so I know this is a true statement. This is a proportionality statement. Now, with triangles or other shapes, this is going to be side lengths, segments. Except, remember, when we refer to a segment's length, we don't put the little segment symbol over the top. I'm going to do an example of this in the next video so you see what's going on. But when they say statement of proportionality, they're talking about setting fractions equal to each other. All right, using the side lengths, the segments. If they say a similarity statement, okay, this right here is a similarity statement. This shape is similar to this shape. Okay, similarity statement. Okay, a proportionality statement is going to look more like this, but it's going to have segments. So maybe AB over XY equals BC over YZ. And as many sides as you have, you have that many fractions. So with a triangle, I have three sides, I'll have three fractions. If it was a quadrilateral with four sides, I'd have four fractions. If it was a pentagon with five sides, I'd have five fractions. And if I got way up into big shapes like decagons that have ten sides, I would need to have ten fractions. 
okay? That's what a statement of proportionality looks like though. It's just a fraction equaling another fraction. And I just keep going with as many fractions as I need to. All right, so that's lesson 6.1, just kind of explaining what's going on. Now you need to watch the second video to do some examples of this. All right, so make sure you watch both videos and take good notes.